In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Good morning. <clears throat> Today is the Sunday of the Canaanite woman. And the title of this homily is The Way to Wholeness. So we've just come to the end of a, of a very long cycle in the church, in the church year, spanning from all saints until now. And when we hear this reading today, it should immediately bring to our minds that we're about to enter the next period of the church year. We are very close to, to starting the Triodion and Great Lent. Next Sunday is the publican and the Pharisee, in case you were caught off guard there. <clears throat> uh, which is the first service of the pre-Lenten period. Here, we put the Octoechos, which is the book of the eight tones, aside, and we bring the Triodion out. It's the serv service book of the, as the main guide for the church services all the way through uh, Lazarus Saturday. After Lazar Lazarus Saturday, we have other books, Holy Week and then the Pentecostarion. But, as with all things in the church, she provides us with a foretaste of things to come, and sometimes a foreshadowing of the foretaste of things to come. We never do anything abruptly in the Orthodox Church. Before Pascha, there's Holy Week, so that's like a prep for Pascha. And before Holy Week, there's the 40-day Lenten fast as a prep for Holy Week. And then at the beginning, uh, um, and that, that starts on Forgiveness Sunday. And then at, from Forgiveness Sunday evening, there's three Sundays that lead up to Forgiveness Sunday. So here we see preparation of preparation of preparation. But this is also a preparation, Canaan, the Canaanite woman and the reading today. The gospel reading today is, is it's a remarkable story. It's short, concise, and stark about a Canaanite woman and a mother at that coming out of her country of Tyre and Sidon, seeking mercy and healing for her daughter from our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. It is through her faith, humility, and perseverance that she attains this healing and wholeness, as also could be translated to healing, for both her daughter and for herself. And this is the, th the theme of the homily today, is faith, humility, and perseverance. So there was quite a bit, of, a bit of meaning packed into this reading, and it's a short story. It's surprising that so much can be packed into such a short, a short story. So let's see if we can plumb the depths a bit, elevate our minds, and see what Christ is teaching us through this encounter with this humble mother. It's a short reading, so we can read it through once more, piece by piece, and hear with a bit more of attention. At that time, Jesus went to the district of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman from the region came and cried out, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But he did not answer her one word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. So here we have a Canaanite mother coming out of her land or her land of Tyre and Sidon, to encounter the master and physician of our souls and bodies. Our Lord is also coming out of his land, of Israel. <clears throat> and she recognizes him from a distance, it says. And she cries out, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. This is a key indicator that she already had some knowledge about Christ and about the people of Israel, for she called him Lord, son of David. But see her great humility here shining for us already in the beginning as she does not even approach close to him at first, but only from a distance. She does not even ask healing for herself, 
but for her daughter. It says that Christ did not answer one word. This is not, and why is this? This is not out of contempt or annoyance, but on the contrary, he is setting this engagement up to be a great example for his disciples and those around him. At this point, even the disciples are begging Christ to send her away. But she is not deterred, but rather draws closer and bows in prostration before Christ, saying, Lord, help me. Then again, Christ gives reason why he should not help her by throwing the bread prepared for Israel and give it to the dogs, which is referencing the Gentiles here. Brothers and sisters, let us not be scandalized at what Christ says here because he is only making a greater example, a more glorious and exalted example out of this gentle and humble mother. The mother with great love for her daughter is not deterred by, call, by being called a little dog and does not quit but continues in an even more lowly response, agreeing with the Lord but claiming that even the little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their Lord's table. Finally, Jesus answers this persevering woman and says that her faith is great and as a result is granted her request. Her daughter is healed at that very moment. Can you see how through her perseverance with humility, it moves our Lord and Master to have mercy and bestow her request. This should be a great indicator to us and a paradigm for us to follow. We should learn from this example and emulate it in our approach to the Lord. As King David says in arguably the most prayed psalm in our church services, a contrite and humble heart, O God, though it not despise. There is an elevated and even higher symbolic meaning of this engagement as well. The Canaanite woman here represents the Gentiles and her daughter, all the nations, which are tormented by evil spirits. Here our Lord is foreshadowing the future conversion of the Gentile nations by his disciples bringing his body and blood to them through the divine mysteries represented by the bread for the children, which is the Israel of God. The Gentiles are not yet grafted into Christ's body as they have not yet received the teaching unto faith and baptism, but they are already receiving the crumbs, which is the hope and belief in the promise. The Gentiles will be grafted in over the subsequent centuries and become the Israel of God of the new covenant and partake of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, of which we are about to hear in the divine liturgy. If we are in doubt about this interpretation of this meeting, let's hear who I like to lean on heavily all the time, St. Theophylact, and hear what he says concerning this passage. Women, when the woman saw her advocates, the apostles, had not succeeded, again she approaches fervently and calls upon the Lord. Christ speaks of her as a dog because the Gentiles led an unclean life and were involved with blood of meat sacrifices, sacrificed to idols, while the Jews he speaks of as children. But she answers wisely and indeed profoundly, even though I am a dog and not worthy to receive a loaf of bread that is a mighty act and a great sign, nevertheless grant this to me, which is a small thing in comparison with thy power, though it be to me great. For crumbs are not large in the eyes of those who eat loaves, but to dogs they are large, and they feed on them. Now Jesus shows the reason why he put off healing her at the beginning, so that the faith and understanding of the woman might be made manifest. Christ did not immediately give his assent at the beginning, and even drove her away. But now with her faith having been revealed, she hears the words of praise. Great is thy faith by saying, be it unto me even as thou wilt, be it unto thee even as thou wilt, Christ shows that if she had not had faith, she would not have obtained her request. So too, if we desire to obtain something, nothing prevents us from obtaining what we desire. 
Notice that even if saints should ask on our behalf, as the apostles did for the woman, still we accomplish even more when we ask ourselves. The Canaanite woman is also a symbol of the church gathered from among the Gentiles. For Gentiles who first were driven away, later were advanced to the rank of sons and were deemed worthy of the bread. I mean the body of the Lord. It's almost like a, a, like a, a cheat code. If you hear bread in the, in the Gospels, it's usually symbolic of his body. Um, and while the Jews became, became dogs, thinking that they were being uh, fed by the crumbs, that is, the minute and insignificant details of the letter of the law, Tyre means besieged, Sidon, they who hunt, and Canaan, made ready by humility. Therefore the Gentiles who were besieged by evil in, the, in, the, in that the demons were among them hunting the, for souls were also made ready by humility. For the righteous were made ready for the heights of the kingdom of God. So, brothers and sisters, how, how can we put this supreme example into practice? And how can we let it become a way and a paradigm for our experience in our lives. And I think the answer is coming upon us, great in the Holy Lent, as it quickly approaches. This is why the church gives us this reading just before the Sunday of the publican and the Pharisee. It's a preparation for the preparation. So let's enter into the pre-fast by humbling ourselves and denying our own will, putting away all the distractions of the world being a servant to others, asking for their needs before our own, submitting it to Christ, coming to repentance through confession, fasting with diligence, piety and worship, and forgiving and loving our neighbor, and persisting and persevering in prayer. Let's increase our faith by learning it in a deeper way so we can know the promises of our Lord Jesus Christ and have confidence that he will fulfill them. Then with faith and with right faith, perseverance in prayer and with a humble heart, God will hear our petitions and grant us our requests. But as St. Gregory Palamas says, but if we are stirred up in arrogance and pride by our natural gifts and qualities or something external we have made our own, we must understand that we are blunting our faith in God, falling away from divine grace and all but destroying our existence as humans. Let's then quickly correct ourselves by returning to humility through repentance that we may be found by God among the merciful in the age to come. Now may our God and Savior Jesus Christ grant us the grace that he bestowed upon this humble woman so that we may be granted our requests that lead to salvation and wholeness. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.